In this guitar lesson, I wanted to go over a bunch of really common bluegrass licks. And the best thing about these licks is you can take these exact same licks and you can apply them to several different bluegrass songs. And I'm gonna show you how I can do that here in a second and give you all some pointers on all that. But some of the, these licks are gonna sound a little bit like this. And you don't have to play them quite as fast as I did there. I'd actually recommend learning these very slowly and really focusing on keeping a light pick stroke and making sure each note rings out very cleanly. And it's amazing if you start out slower with these things, it's really amazing how fast your speed will develop. And all of a sudden you'll be there and you're, you'll be up to speed playing these things a lot faster than you, you thought you could have. You know, I know that because I haven't been doing the flat picking stuff for too long. And I remember when I first started, I was just really struggling to get my speed up and I was trying to force it, you know, and it was, everything sounded sloppy and then I slowed it, slowed it down and then eventually just got there a lot quicker than I thought. And we're all trying to get a lot quicker. You know, I'm always trying to get cleaner and faster all the time. And uh, it's going to be a lifetime goal, I think, because you hear some of those bluegrass players out there like, like Brian Sutton, Tony Rice, they're, they're incredible. And that's, that's what we all want to get to one of these days. But um, this is what we're going to be working on in this lesson. If you've ever been to a bluegrass jam, you know that a lot of these bluegrass fiddle tunes, they're structured very similarly in that they've got this main melody line that repeats over and over again. And today, you know, take, we're going to take Red Haired Boy as an example, and there's kind of a four bar melody line that repeats over and over again. And I'll show you how I can, you can apply these licks that we're about to learn to this melody line, and you can create your own guitar solos when it comes time for you to take your guitar solo, you know, at those bluegrass jams, all the musicians will trade back their solos. And uh, these licks are gonna be really handy when it comes time for you to take your solo because you can really turn some heads and you can impress some people if you know some of these really nice sounding, tasteful bluegrass licks. So uh, here's the example of what we're doing. Here's one way to include these licks into this melody line. So we got a four bar melody line of Red Haired Boy. Sounds like this. There's the first bar. There's the second. There's the third. And now's the fourth. And what you can do to start adding these licks into that melody line and kind of add your own uh, bluegrass flavor to the to your solo and, and your solo break, you can instead one way one way you can do this is instead play the first three bars of the melody, and then that, that fourth bar, you're gonna replace that fourth bar melody line with one of these bluegrass licks. And it'll sound something like this instead. And here's the lick. And then you repeat it. It sounds really cool to throw those bluegrass licks in there. It changes up everything a ton. And another thing you can do, this is one of my favorites, is to uh, play the first two bars of the melody and then the second two bars of the melody you'll play, you'll replace the second two bars of the melody with the licks. You know, two bars length worth of the licks. Sound like this. There's the first bar. There's the second bar. Now here's two bars of the lick. There's lots of different ways you can do that. You can take, we've got 16 licks that we're going to learn in this lesson, and a lot of them are going to be one bar in length. And you'll be able to use that one bar, those one bar licks, and either replace the fourth bar with those licks, or you can combine those one bar licks in different ways, you know, just experiment with them to create a longer two bar lick, and then you can do what I just did, you know, play two bars of melody and then two bars of the lick. And, uh, you know, that's, that sounds really good. A lot of times it sounds good to do three bars melody, one bar lick, and then you'll, you'll for the next round, you know, right immediately after you, when you repeat it, you can do two bars melody and two bars lick, you know, just kind of build up the amount of the licks that you're playing in your solo break. So 
um, just some ideas, you know, that what you can also do, instead of playing the melody line, you can play at all, you can play a four bars worth of the licks. You just combine them all, and we'll talk about that here in a second. And when you finally get to the level, you know, you've been learning these licks a lot, and you're developing your skills, and you're more comfortable with the licks, they almost start to get second nature, and then this is where, you know, this is where you start getting good, is when you can mesh the melody line with these licks and you can incorporate you know the melody line into your licks it sounds really cool so that's just one of those things you just got to keep keep playing bluegrass and eventually that'll just click and it'll kind of it'll kind of happen naturally so let's start getting into these licks and we'll go over the first lick and i'll just throw up the tablature and i'll give you all some pointers as we go along here is lick number one and all these licks we're learning today, they're going to be in the key of G. And we're not going to use our capo for any of them, and we're in standard tuning. If you'd like to download a PDF that has all 16 of these licks on it, just click the download button right below this video here at Country Guitar Online. You can download that PDF. And one more quick note, if you don't know how to play the melody line for Red Haired Boy, we've also got a separate lesson here at Country Guitar Online where you can learn the melody line of all the flat picking parts of Red Haired Boy. And we also break down the rhythm guitar part for Red Haired Boy, so check that out if you need to. But now let's learn lick number one, and I'll play through it a couple times and then give you all a few pointers. So here we go. One more time, a little bit slower. This lick number one is one bar in length, so you can use it to replace the fourth bar of the melody line of these tunes like we were just discussing. And a couple other really important things as you're looking at this tablature, pay close attention to the down pick and the up pick triangles. There's a really traditional and common way to flat pick with the right hand. And I'd say the majority of flat pickers do this, and this is how you can build up your speed a lot. And it's very simple, all you do is you just do your, with your pick, you just do down, up, down, up, down, up. Every other note, you just keep that motion going throughout the whole tune. And even when you hit, when you come up to the hammer-ons and the pull-offs, you'll pass over the strings as if you're going to pick the strings for the hammer-ons and pull-offs, but you won't actually pick it. It's, the only reason you do that is just to keep that motion going with the right hand. Builds up the momentum, and I'm exaggerating there. Really, it's gonna be like this much smaller pick stroke but still keeps that motion going. I'm gonna play through lick number one one more time and just keep an eye, I'll exaggerate the pick stroke so you can see, um, here we go. That's the idea. You probably wanna get into the habit of doing that on all these bluegrass licks. Another really important thing when you're, when you're flat picking is pull-offs. It's the direction that you do your pull-off. And most people's tendency is to do that pull-off downward. And I know that's my tendency. When I first started, it was always just much easier to do that downward pull-off, but that's not always the most efficient way to do the pull-off. Sometimes it's a lot better to do an upward pull-off. And you wanna always try to pull off in the direction that you're headed next, so. For this pull off here in, the, in lick number one, you pull off upwards because next with your left ring, you're going to be headed to the second string. And it's kind of tricky on this one. I'm not going to lie, I actually do a downward pull off when I'm playing this lick. I've got some bad habits, but it's a good idea to get into the good habits early on because it'll pay off in the end. So you can see there much more efficient to do that upward pull off because you do the downward pull off you gotta come all the way back up here to hit that second string so that's the idea you can do that on the second pull off too for this lick do an upward pull off with the left middle 
So just keep that in mind as you're going through these licks, the direction that you want to do your pull-offs. And it's not, that upward pull-off's not gonna happen overnight. It's something you'll have to work on, but something great to work on because once you get it down, you'll see all these extremely fast flat pickers. You watch their left hands, it sometimes just seems like their left hand's floating over the strings. They're not even moving it hardly. And that's one of the way they do that is doing those pull-offs in the direction they're headed. So anyways, that's lick number one. Pause the video if you need some more practice on that first lick, but we're gonna head on to uh, lick number two. Lick number two is pretty similar to lick number one, just a little bit different. The next few licks we're gonna cover, they're all kind of in this, this area right here on the first, second, third string. I like that spot a lot for these bluegrass licks, so I wanna give you all a little bit of variety. You don't have to memorize them all right now, but keep that PDF, you can always refer back to it. So here we go, here is riff number two. Once again. So that's riff number two. Pause the video if you need to, but we're gonna move on to lick number three. Lick number three. <laughs> Moving on to lake number four. Once again. Now here's lick number five. That very first hammer on, right there, it happens so quickly. It's almost like we got a grace note to start this lick. If you're not familiar with the term grace note, that very first note, first string, first fret, right there, that would be the grace note. And a grace note is something, it's a note that's almost not even there because it happens so quickly and it leads into the next main note, just like that. So if you wanted to play this, this lick without the grace note, it would sound almost unchanged like this. But then add the grace note. Pretty cool thing to add into this, some of these bluegrass licks, those grace notes. You can add them in a lot of different places. You can experiment with this on your own. Pretty cool effect to add in. It sounds a lot harder than it is. Once you get that technique down, it's not too difficult. So here's lick number five. A couple more times, slow down.
Uh, here we go. Here is lick number six. Mm -hmm. 